G'day guys, this is former Lobo Hugh Greenwood here and current North Melbourne AFL footballer. I'm here with episode 73 of Talking Grammar. Enjoy. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jeff Grammar with the Albuquerque Journal and this is episode 73 now as you just heard of the Talking Grammar podcast and our guest today, former Lobo Hugh Greenwood back in the United States from Australia. Great conversation today. I think you're really going to enjoy this one with Hugh. Uh, trip down memory lane as a not just a Lobo great on the court, but uh, some of the stuff he did off the court, some of the stuff he's doing now with family, but really just some memories that he has um, with some of those former Lobo teammates. I think you're really going to enjoy this. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy all these podcasts on the Albuquerque Journal Podcast Network. And uh, if you do, let me know what you think. At Jeff Grammer on X, formerly known as Twitter. You can email me, ggrammer at abqjournal.com. Let me know what you think and uh, give me feedback. Much appreciated. And follow all our coverage of Lobo basketball and all sports at abqjournal.com. For now, hope you enjoy this conversation with former Lobo, Hugh Greenwood. Hugh, what's up, man? How have you been? Jeff, it's been too long. I've been very, very good. It's nice to be, I still say home. It's nice to be home here in Albuquerque. You, uh, home in Albuquerque, a lot of Lobo fans are going to love you (laughs) just saying that because you, as most people know and remember, are one of the most beloved Lobo basketball players from when you were here. Uh, I haven't covered another Lobo that that was any more loved than you were. Um, you do still feel the love here, don't you? Oh, thank you, mate. That's nice of you to say. Yeah, it's um, you think when you leave, you, you're quick to be forgotten. But um, coming back, it's been really nice um, to still be stopped and to, to go to games and Still be appreciated, I suppose, because knowing how much this place meant to be, meant to me to for people to still um, to come up and have conversations and speak about um, their memories from my time here and my family as well. Um, it certainly means a lot. So it's nice to know that we left some sort of of legacy here at UNM and here in Albuquerque. It didn't hurt that you were obviously a four year starter, so you were on the court a lot for fans to get to know. You were off the court, spoke in front of post game in front of microphones and cameras a ton especially your senior year you were the pretty much became the face and the only one that talked on that team yeah, by well, the end. DD wasn't really helping me out no, was, he? No, he other, was the other senior <laughs> um and uh but you also did stuff off the court uh the way you played was just endearing to fans and stuff like that um you uh you made a family with the local girl too which doesn't doesn't hurt the Albuquerque, uh, the New Mexicans, um, love for you. And uh, what brings you back right now this uh, this go-round? You're, you're visiting for about how long? How, how long are you in the States? Yeah, well, back for that reason, met my beautiful wife here, um, Kirsten, uh, and have two little kids too. So they're half New Mexican, half Australian. So we uh, had my son in 2020 in February, just before COVID kicked off. So we haven't had a chance to to bring them back and show them where mum grew up and yeah. has, haven't had a chance to meet uh, aunties and uncles and grandparents. So so um, to get here and spend time with them. And also it's a great place to train. The ele- you forget the elevation. Yeah. Um, coming, So I'm coming into my ninth year now and trying to find every uh, little inch that I can to get an advantage. So to be able to tick, uh, basically do two birds with one stone, hang out with some family and see Albuquerque again and also get a great training block in it's, um like I said, it's really, really nice to be here. So I saw you on Instagram posting that you were you were at Johnson Field one day. I don't know where else you're, you've been practicing and, and training. Um, but uh, you, you're looking for, for people around town. You were looking for anybody that could uh, kind of train with you, that knows what you're doing, right? Yep. That's, there's, as we know, there's not a whole lot of flat grass here in, uh, in the desert here in Albuquerque. So Johnson Field uh, and the soccer ovals out the back uh, have been my, my hangout uh, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. And... Um, with our sport, we need to be able to kick to someone. And again, not a whole lot of people here in Albuquerque know how to kick an AFL footy. But um, once I put that post out, um, found out that there's about eight Australians and I think five or six are on the cross-country team. One okay. even from Tassie that I met, um, Sam, uh, they're actually off to, to national champs uh, yeah. this week. Uh, so Sam actually grew up in Hobart in Tasmania of all places and now he's here at, at UNM. He's, he went to the same high school that my mum went to and so our mums went to the, to the high school I don't know, at the same <laughs> time. But that's Tassie for you and to be on the other side of the world is, is pretty cool. So I actually have found some training buddies as well as my brother-in-law who I've had to fast track out of kick a footy. But uh, yeah, you'll find me hanging out running laps on the oval out the back. Where uh, do the I, I know you, you get this a lot from 
from from guys like me and, and people in the states that, that don't quite know the difference. But yeah, don't say rugby. <laughs> right. Well, the, and so that's the thing. It's not rugby. Um, it's footy. It is footy. Um, yeah. And uh, how much uh, for for people here that spend their Sundays and Saturdays too watching football? How close is it to football? How close is it in terms of continuous action and running? Is it to, to maybe a soccer? Um, is it a combination of those sports? What what would you do? to uh, describe or how would you describe what your sport is to somebody that has no idea? Yeah, well, you're pretty much spot on. It is it is a combination of rugby and soccer sort of sort of put together. Um, it doesn't stop, really. It stops for um, cold stoppages where, like, if we get tackled and they throw the ball up to go again, but it's not like NFL where there's one play and that's it, you yeah. wait, it's you're on for the whole time. So the games, are, whoa, the, there's four quarters. I think it's the longest game... On the biggest sporting, on the biggest field in the world, longest game. There's a bunch of things. It's just not the most players yeah. out of any sport. There's 18 on either side on the field at once. Um, so it's just a crazy made-up game. It's our equivalent to the NFL. It's right. a, it's our game. We made it up. We love it. It's our our national sport. Um, but it is a crazy, crazy game. Tackling, running. I think we run 13 to 14 k's. Wingers run about 15, which I don't know is that eight, nine miles on top of the tackling and every all, game, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and we just play once a week. We don't train a whole lot because our bodies get cooked. So it's just about recovering that week and being able to go again. Um, we play 23 rounds and there's a bye, before, and then there's four weeks worth of finals. So it's good. It's fun. It's it's brutal. The uh, the average career spans. 20 games which is less than a season that's 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 the yeah, average that's, career that's the average career is about 20 games of afl whether that's through in, like you get either delisted or cut injuries um and you've you been get, now nine years this is nine yeah i'm up to 117 or 18 so i'm in that three or four percent that have made 100 games which i'd never thought would happen i didn't think i'd play one having played basketball and tried to come back and play footy i thought i'd maybe play one but yeah, it's been nice. Well, let's go now. back to that a little bit. You so obviously you you grew up and, and you have some some footy DNA in you. Uh, grandfather, is that right? Um, yep. is one of the one of the greatest all time. Well, he's am, am I overstating it a little bit? Uh, yeah, maybe he'd, he'd like <laughs> to hear that. He one of the most he won three three Super Bowls in a row. Was going for his fourth. So in terms of team, he's probably one of, in okay. a part of one of the best teams and was the fullback, which is the last line of defense basically. So played a a pretty important position. Um, so and you played it growing up. Yeah, yeah. Footy. I, I try to explain it like it's the first thing you do. Like I don't know what, like is it peewee footy or even t-ball? It's yeah. like when you hit a certain, you hit four or five, what's the first sport that every kid plays? Uh, it's called Oz Kick, which is learning how to play footy. So every kid in Australia, every that's the, the first thing you do, you just you go to Oz Kick. And that's Canada, what you do. it's hockey. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just the first thing you do. So I did, and again, having – um, family that have played it, but in Tasmania especially, it's where we're, we're a mad football state. Um, so yeah, I've started when I was five or f I reckon four or five, <clears throat> and then played all the way through until I had to make a decision between footy and basketball when I was fifteen. So um, it was I loved it as a kid, and it was in my family. And again, being Australian, love love watching it. Your decision to play basketball though wasn't just sort of uh, you know entirely out of left field to, to use a, 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 an American sport term, I guess. <laughs> I um, th you were good, man. Like you were, you were playing for, uh, on a, I guess the boomers program, you were the youngest player at one point with the boomers. If I remember correctly yeah. Yeah. in the program, the Australian boomers uh, or Australia boomers are the, uh, the national basketball team, like, a like the dream team, the team USA right. basketball team here. And you were the youngest player uh, with them for a while in, in their system. Uh, you decided to try and make a go of it in basketball at the Australian Institute of Sport. And I'm curious, and, and this is one of the things I want to ask you about is I don't think I ever asked you about your recruiting here. How did you get here? Uh, it was the day of Alford, you know, the era of Alford mm -hmm. and the era of noodles and um, Craig Neal. And I'm yep. curious what your recruiting was like. How did they get you here? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I suppose <laughs> I peaked. I certainly peaked early. <clears throat> uh, yeah, my mum was the basketballer. She was AIS as well. We were the first first and second generation. I will interject athletes. here. She was pregnant with you, if I remember she correctly. Was, yep. Still playing professional basketball yep. in she Australia. Was, yep. She won a national title um, when she was pregnant with me. Yeah, I think she was like, she was pregnant, pregnant too. A few months, like uh, certainly a few months. months. Yeah. yeah, she was. She had a bump and everything. That's why she wasn't going to tell her coach because they'd lost two in a row, and they made they were making looking like they were going to go pretty well again. Yeah. And 
so with with a few weeks weeks left in the season, mum was starting to show. So she had to go and tell the coach like I'm actually pregnant, but I want to keep going because this is going to be my last year, and we might we might get it done. And sure enough, they did. So <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, it worked out. <laughs> it worked out all right for her. Oh, that's but, awesome. Yeah, but back to my recruiting process. Um, I get Ryan Miller. Um, that's right, Rhino. Yeah, Rhino. So uh, he had a pretty strong connection to Australia, um, and I guess having been at the AIS, it was just a it was a breeding ground for Australian basketball. As if you were a, if you were a college coach and you wanted to go find an Australian, you knew where to go because all yeah. the best pl- all the best of them in one spot. So You'd you find go twenty to one or play. so, right? Yep, there was 15, 20 of us. You could go right there and watch all the best ones and go. Yep, I like him. I don't like him. I'm going to offer him. And so that's where I was. Uh, and so. Um, UNM, I didn't know anything about, didn't know what what Albuquerque was, but Cam was my best mate at the AIS and he went first and watched all his videos of um, highlights in the pit and the fan base and it it just looked really, really cool. So when Ryan um, asked me to come on a visit, I said, absolutely, met coach, met Noodles and walked around campus and I thought this is the place where I want to be. And on the last, you know, the last meeting before I took off, they sort of, um, coach brought me in his, into his office and goes, look, we'd love to have you but we actually don't have any scholarships <laughs> available at the moment. So I, I was like, well, what was the point of bringing me all the way here without a scholarship? But um, I guess um, they managed to find one yeah. by the time I, as they do, by the time um, my decision um, needed to be made. So once that opened up, um, I was pretty quick to get on the phone and say, yep, this is... I never knew that. Place I, I didn't yeah. realize they and didn't even actually have a scholarship when they first one. And we didn't know, like, we, we had no idea how the college stuff worked. We just assumed that... You're bringing me here, you're taking me on an official that you had a spot yeah, for Yeah, if me. I want it, you're inviting me. That's, That's <laughs> exactly right. So at the end, we we're pretty much ready to sort of go there. I had another visit afterwards, so I couldn't – I was like, well, I can't – I need to make sure I do this visit before I go and – I don't want to waste their time by committing sure. here on the spot. But I didn't have to, I didn't have that option because they brought me in and said, yeah, look, we don't actually have a scholarship for you. So Who um, all did you visit? Uh, it was just – ended up being UNM and St. Mary's were my last two and – most most of the boys were going to St Mary's, yeah. Um, as as most and that campus basketball, is beautiful. yeah, beautiful campus. Yeah. But I just wanted to do something different. Yeah. All, all my mates were going to to St Mary's, and I wanted to try and do something different and go to U and M. So thankfully, it all worked out in the end. But yeah, it wasn't that's looking awesome. great for a little while. Well, that's awesome. I uh, like I said, I didn't know you didn't even have a scholarship at first. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I want to get into some Lobo stories, but I want to save those for the end. I want to cover obviously it's what you're doing now. Um. But uh, AFL, you, you've been, like you said, you've been doing it nine years. You've had some success. You, you had an injury. You said you didn't miss a whole lot of time. Where are you in terms of when your career might um, wrap up with, with AFL? Yeah, well. <clears throat> you've already extended. Uh, you said, what, 20 years was or 20 games is the average Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it gets, it's getting to the point where um, it could be winding down pretty shortly in the ne- at least in the next couple of years um i guess 31 I, now 31 Th- 31 yes okay. yes yes, yes. Um, oh, man. i've been reminded since i've been here don't you worry having kids come up and say oh you know i loved watching you when i was a kid and it's making me feel so old you're but, getting um, the first round I'm of that the huh? first round of that it's it's very cool but it's very like wow like i went to the highlands game yep. the other week and i ran into a, a couple that um would as I was walking back to my car and they were waiting for, they were, they taught at El Dorado and a lot of El Dorado kids were playing for Highlands and they were sort of standing there and the point guard comes out and sees the, I guess it was a teacher and got talking and then recognized me and goes, Oh my gosh, I used to love watching you when I was a kid. Now, now he's about to graduate college at, at uh, Highlands. So that That's was awesome. Uh, yeah, that was it. And then the lady was showing me photos of um, uh, when I was at, in Vegas with her kids and her kids are like, five or six and now they're in college yeah you know? they're she's working like, here's, somewhere and, here's yeah. where the photo now and here's where she is now she's she's a freshman i'm like oh my gosh that is that's cool but it makes me feel really old <laughs> um but yeah it's i'm in a i started off in that went to the went to adelaide and um i spent a year in sort of the reserves which is like the 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 minors i suppose okay. the equivalent so i spent my first year just sort of plying my trade getting back to playing football and i wasn't very good that's for sure so it took me a little but while eight years off right seven, seven eight years you hadn't played yeah hadn't played for eight years exactly yeah, yeah. so again the <clears throat> completely different so it just took me a year to sort of find my feet um and then i d- debuted so um, finally got my chance to play senior footy. Uh, it was round nine the following year and went on to play in a Super Bowl that year or a grand final. Yeah. We called it a grand final, which is Super Bowl that year and thought, how good's this? This is We lost, <laughs> which we should have won with the best team by a mile. Um, and you remember it very clearly? I remember it very clearly. I don't like to remember it, but I remember it very clearly. And 
It's funny how sport works. I yeah. thought I'd be there every year. I haven't been to final since, and that was. So you got to get to one. I got to get to one, but we're in it now. But again, in a stage of my career where I'm a little bit older, and I've bought been bought into a side that's rebuilding. So okay. my my job now is to sort of help guide these younger players. So where finals could be a little ways off for our group <clears throat> at the moment, but um, I'm really enjoying that side of things. And my passion has always been to coach when I retire. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I did a running session this morning and <clears throat> the attitude's got my lungs. Does it? Got that cough. Um, um, so when when you are brought into a situation like this and, and you want to get into coaching, is, is that sort of part of your daily routine now is, is thinking ahead towards like, okay, my mentorship role now as an older teammate, as a veteran teammate, um, I need to I need to do this in a way that actually helps me become a coach. Are you in that mindset yes, a little bit? Absolutely. The re- well, that was the selling point to to was I was I was a free agent and and North approached me and said like we want you to play for a couple of more years to help out our younger group and then we'd love to <clears throat> transition you into a co- coaching role. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, the the coach that brought me in's been fired since, so <laughs> I don't know where that sits now. But um, the new one that that's come in is. Um, and the and my line coach, so my, I'm playing the midfield, so my midfield coach, um, we work pretty closely together. Yeah. So I think it'll be it might not be a coaching role here, but I'm doing some coaching at some some high schools and some um, development programs. We had a coach at a high school last year. We had five guys get drafted, so we were, we were pretty okay. good. So um, yeah, that's that's always been my passion. I always thought it'd be back in the states doing basketball, but really? I, yeah, that was I didn't think that football would last this long to be honest. Yeah. But it's been nine years now, so I've tried to sort of get back. Um, I've gone to a couple of UNM practices, went out to see Corey Alford yeah. uh, at Huntington, and just sort of sit in on some practices and see how much of how much I remember or how much the games changed. Because um, I know more, I know Kirsten would love to move back to the states, but um, we'll see what happens. You guys there. may have to have a, a bounce back and forth every few years, yeah. uh, kind of thing, right? Exactly. Uh, I am curious what kind of coach uh, Hugh Greenwood is going to be. Is it a uh, is it a laid back? Everybody knows Hugh Greenwood is a on the court. You played intense, but off mm. the court, you're you know you're you know maybe this is another kind of American thing where every time we hear you say mate or anything like that, we're just man, such a laid back guy, such a easy going guy. I know it's not always necessarily like that, That's but right. um, are you a laid back, easy going coach, or are you a are you a a, a Steve Alford who who makes sure you get the defense right and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Like, who do you model your coaching I'm, after? I'm pretty you're like I like to think I'm 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 fairly laid back, but my passion is to watch players develop. So I don't think I'd I'd want to get into sort of the X's and O's. I'd love to be on we call them development coaches yeah. or pathway coaches in that see a guy from day one and watch him grow like a Tony Snell or a Cam sure. Bairstow. Like watching those guys go from walking in and Cam could barely walk and chew gum at the same time to going on and playing. I'm sure he'd love hearing you say that. Yeah, he knows knows that. (laughs) Um, Going on and playing the NBA, Tony's the same, wouldn't say boo, wouldn't just, and then all of a sudden Phil hurts his ankle and Tony gets a start and runs with it. So to to watch those guys and learn, and for me being the opposite, came in off the back of a really strong World Championships campaign and I actually regressed. Um, So I want to help players develop, but I'd, I'd... I think I'm fairly competitive, so yeah. I think I'd be pretty hard when I need to be. But I'm also I understand, and I've been through enough to know what it takes and what what does work and what doesn't work. So that's all I want to do. So you just said something there though that you regressed, and I'm oh, yeah. I mean I'm not going to argue with you about your own career, but you did a different role at UNM. You were you became a point guard when you were a, more of a lead guard shooting. Um, I don't know if shooting guard is the right term. Mm-hmm. I know now it's more of a lead guard is the term they use. But yeah. um, you, you, I think you averaged over 17 points a game in the, in the World University Games or yeah. whatever it was before you came here. Yeah. You come here, you become a four-year starter, the first three, or, or as a point guard, when you have guys on the team like an Alex Kirk, a Cam Barristow, a Tony Snell, Kendall Williams, that was the starting five that everyone loves to remember from that 2013 season. Mm. Your role wasn't to do what you had been doing. So I don't know if it was a regression as much as – as a, a change of role, and then all of a sudden, your senior year, you're like, "Hey, okay, go back to that." Yeah, that's something. Yeah, so I think you bring up. Yeah, it's a good point, I, I, and I think that's why I've made I've managed to play nine years in AFL, and why I had I guess success here at UNM is just because I I know my role and I love my role and I play it well, and so and willing, willing to. Yeah, well, that's half the battle for guys, especially yeah. this day and age, is guys just being accepting of your role. So um, I was very accepting, and I, and I loved it. We won a lot. Yeah, <laughs> we had a great time. But then, like you said, got to my senior year, and I thought, "All right, here we go." That's but I guess it was hard to flip the switch back to what it was before I got here. And as, as you said, was was never a true point guard. And I don't think I ever was a right. really true point guard, but I did enough to get by. Um, so I got to that senior year and Cullen going down yep. hurt. Two games lot. in, Two Thir- games 30 in. game in. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that would have been different having another guy that could 
score and take the pressure off and but that's not here nor there but yeah I just felt like I walked in and left as the same player essentially yeah. like I walked in yeah like I said I feel like I walked in and then four years later I left pretty much the same player I, yeah. in, I guess I didn't improve but I guess I didn't regress but I felt like I pretend not not wasted but um so but basketball didn't turn out the way you thought it would. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, I guess it didn't turn. And that's out not how necessarily. I well, I don't know. I don't want to speak for you, but I, I don't know if that's necessarily any form of regret. But it 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 is what it is. You you probably came here thinking you might get a chance in the NBA, oh, and, and you got some workouts. But yeah. Well, I was youngest. You know, like, like, like you yeah. said, youngest Boomers player, tipped to go to that Olympics, and then um, had been in the All Star Five at the World Championships the year before, yeah. like with all guys that ended up going on to play NBA. So. But I mate, that's that's off the back of the decisions that I made here. I certainly we won a lot, but um, I certainly enjoyed myself. Yeah, probably a little bit too much at my time during U and M, which I'm not afraid to say. And um, yeah, as I said, I, I loved my time here, but I certainly loved it a bit too much, and it came at a cost. And that happened to be my basketball. It wasn't just uh, the basketball though that you did here. You did obviously you still have the uh, the do, tattoo. Yeah. Probably due for a touch up. <laughs> um, due for a touch up, but you you did off the court stuff too, and and obviously. Um, your mom, who, who did pass away, mm. um, people here just fell in love with your whole family because you were open about, um, and she was willing to be open about mm. um, her battle yes. uh, with cancer. And you you got the tattoo. You you did it because your hand was always showing, I think is kind of how yeah, you described well, and, it. As you said, in front of the camera a lot, sort of those last two years. Yeah. Um, so sort of having it sit there. Yeah. And so you you did the pink pack, right? Yeah, I did. And um, raising money, giving money to, I, I think it went to UNM yep, Cancer. Yeah, UNM Cancer Center, yep. And um, you're still doing stuff like that now. And mm. and I'm curious what kind of stuff you're doing now with that. And uh, and also, I'll, I will ask, with, without delving too deep into the raw emotion of, um, you know, your mom's battle, you you still talk about her a lot. And you see, I know you post on social media, and I imagine you're teaching the kids an awful lot about her. Yeah, it's it's <clears throat> the championships and all that stuff was great, and the impact that we had here was fantastic. But I guess the proudest thing of, during my time here was the the impact that we had on the community um, and and the cancer space um, and Pink Pack to raise yeah. close to I think it was, might have been eighty thousand <clears> dollars <throat> at the time when I left yeah. um, was probably the proudest thing, and not only proud of what we were able to do, but more proud of the community, the buy-in. Um, from everyone here in, in Albuquerque just got behind something, whether they ha were affected by cancer or not. They loved Lobo basketball and they loved, um, well, they sympathized with mum's story and, sure. and, and my story. So to that was probably the proudest thing uh, during my time here. And um, I know that that money went to some some great places. And as I said, the, the buy-in was cool. We had the shirts. We had, yeah. we were the, we, for the first time, we had the pink game um, with, our, with the uniforms. And I know that still goes now, yep. um, especially with the women's program. So to be a part of that and the, the it's, it's been great, like, as I said, being reminded of how old I am, but forgetting that mum actually hadn't passed when I was here so right. to have people say oh we loved your time here and sorry to hear about like they still connect they connected with mum because she was here all the time yeah and stick, sticks they're not hard they're, they're pretty hard to miss there are uh, stick stands out mum's hanging out and jo obviously Josie being here too like Albuquerque was we were, we were part of the community here so to have everyone come come up and um, still speak about mum is really cool and um, yeah we lost a not long after I sort of graduated two years later. Yeah, a couple so, years right? Yeah, yeah, 2017. So. But yeah, truly a home away from home is what Albuquerque became yeah. for you guys. And how, how was Josie? Josie's great. Yeah, Josie's great. She finished up a little bit earlier and that she wanted to get home and, yeah. and be with mum. So, but she got her master's in teaching and now she's uh, she's got her own little year six class at the school five minutes down the road that we went to as kids. So awesome. she's doing really well, still in the family house. In Another Cremor. former Lobo. Yeah, um, that's right. Another former, former on. Lobo, Jose. Yeah, so she's doing really, really well. She's a great auntie too. How is uh, how Sticks? Sticks, yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, Sticks is Sticks. He, uh, he's a... He's, that's dad for yeah, that's people dad, that yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah, most people know, but Sticks, Sticks is dad. He's, uh, yeah, he's a machine. He uh, loves the kids and the kids adore him. Uh, he basically does sort of two weeks on, one week off. He retired after mum passed away, couldn't get back into into work life. So he actually retired, which is which has been really cool because um, he basically spends two weeks at home in Hobart and then he comes over and visits us for a week and the kids run him into the ground yep. and he, limp, he limps back to the plane. And so then he goes recovers. and does the recovery yeah. that then you he have recovers at home for two weeks and he gets the energy to come back again. And he's like a footballer. He's a footballer, yep. So he just, he's, he's got a great cycle. Um, still surfs. He he ended up meeting um, someone who's been awesome. So she's uh, her name's Deb. She's been fantastic for, for the kids and um, 
they actually live she lives about five houses down the road from where our family house was so he basically <laughs> after a couple of years just packed a backpack and moved down the street and moved in with Deb so um, he's going really really well he how loves, often is he it. out of a seven day week how often is sticks in the water oh every day he can every yeah. day he can he uh Tazzy's cold though like you gotta is be it? yeah Tazzy's yeah. cold you gotta be brave to surf but he loves it he's he still does it. though oh, right? I mean oh, all the time if there's surf he's he's in it and then when he comes over we uh I got him this there's a wave pool in Melbourne. There's a little bit of surf, not a whole lot, but there's a wave pool. And I got him a membership to this wave pool. So you can, <laughs> they don't, they don't roll over. So it works well in that you've got two to use a month. So if he doesn't use them, they, they, you miss yes, out. So it's great. Cause he's got to come over and use them. And then he gets to babysit the kids too. So he's got in, like, either your guys' incentive. mind or his mind. He's like, okay, I have to go. I have to <laughs> I have go. To go. And yeah. you're like, we know we're going to get him here. Here are the kids too. When so. he knows he wants to go. Anyway. Oh yeah. He loves it. Yeah. Um, let me ask you a couple, uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up here, but I want to ask for the Lobo fans that are watching or listening a couple stories about the time. I know you just you just saw Corey. Uh, did you see Drew up in Denver too? I did, yep. I Drew saw Gordon, Drew. Yep, I saw Drew. Whose brother obviously is playing for the Denver Nuggets and, and Drew had a highly successful overseas career, professional career. He, he actually had a cup of coffee in the NBA too with the Pistons, I believe it was. Philly, a I think it's Philly. Yeah, Philly, you're right, I'm Philly, sorry. Philly, and then a, maybe... Yeah, you're right. I, was, I know he was with Long Island. I don't yeah. know if he ever played with Brooklyn, but I know he, he, play, he played but with Philly. But he did get some NBA games in under his belt. Yep. Um, and uh, so anyway, you got to see him. You played with him as a freshman though, right? Yep. 2012 season, second round loss to Louisville. Yep. Rick Pitino was the Louisville was, team. Yep. Yep. Um, oh, I think and, was there too. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the bench. And um, so you, you stay in touch with these guys, right? Like who, yeah. who do you stay in touch with most regularly? I mean, you guys are a pretty close group. Yeah, we were. And I think that's why we had so much success is that we were close. And we knew that we were never going to get those sort of five-star recruits that were going to come around and turn around a program like the San Diego States and the UNLVs yep. used to get. But what we hung our hat on was that sort of that connection as a group. Um, yeah. So we were close despite, unfortunately, not achieving – ultimate success we had obviously a lot of success in the mountain west but never quite progressing on as we, as we all know and as unm lobo fans are still waiting for that sweet 16 birth and beyond but um yeah drew i hadn't seen since freshman year he's okay. been he's been yeah he'd been all around he did it the hard way went all across the world yeah. finally got his opportunity um <clears throat> cam every now and then he was never great as you know on his phone so he might just pop up randomly but he's hard one to to keep an eye on Alex Kirk came to visit me in Australia. He was playing okay. in Japan, which was only a stone's throw away from Australia. So he's come over and, and seen me, which was great. Big AK. We're still in fantasy football leagues together. Nice. Uh, obviously, Corey. American football. American football, of course. Yeah. yeah, American football. Love American fantasy. Um, who else do we speak with? Uh, I've caught Devin and O. They're still here. Okay. There's not too many that are still here. I'm going to catch Mace and Dorit. I didn't play with Dorit, but I knew Dorit pretty well. Yeah. So I'll catch up with them. They got some good stuff going the on. The ABC. Yeah. 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 Um, there's not too many. I know Maul and and Chad are still here, and E Man and Phil. So I got to catch Phil and Michaela at some stage. So, so I asked you what kind of coach you're going to be. You just saw Corey Alford. What kind of coach is Corey Alford compared I to his not. dad, Steve? Funny Alford. you ask. I just couldn't take. I, like it was hard to take him seriously because the last time I saw him, like we were sitting there making fun of his dad and, and noodles, like as teammates, and like. To see him as a coach now, I'm watching him with his little, like he does his little squat down and he's got his little training plan hanging out the back of his pants, like full <laughs> blown, got his whistle on. Uh, so I, mean, I I went to practice and I said to his oh, wife, awesome. Haley when I got home, I said, I was just at practice and I could not take him seriously. She goes, don't worry, I can't take him seriously either. It's so weird to think that he's a he's a head coach now, but um, he's pretty hard. He made a few, I up and he, he actually, he, like... He uh he's pretty stern, like he's laid back. Corey's again pretty laid back. But yeah. He had a couple of goes, like sarcastic sort of like, yeah, had a go at a couple of the guys. So um, I know they've lost a couple of games. They're they're good. They were f- yeah, they're pretty good. They've right? been good for in the NAIA. I think they were fourteenth or fifteenth in the country yeah. when I was there. I know they've lost a couple of games now, but um, yeah, <laughs> to see Corey, he was laid back, but he yeah, he gave a gave a few guys a little bit of a not a good. spray, but a stern talking to. Um, but he yeah, is an Alford. Well, he is an Alford. There's the Alford bloody can't help himself. So I think he wants to follow a similar pathway to his dad. I think I think Manchester, where Coach Alford yeah. was like 20 minutes down the road from yeah. Huntington, Huntington. So I feel like he'll be on a, a similar Path. trajectory. Yeah, pathway. Uh, some of the other teammates there, um, we mentioned Tony Snell yep. uh, went on to the NBA. You guys had a good bunch that, that went on to a lot of success. Uh, Tony Snell, we had mentioned um, the the Today Show, I think it was, mm, yes. that, that had the thing about his his son, and they they realized it, 
And um, Tony's a hard guy to, to keep in touch with too. But we, we mentioned watching that on, on, on the Today Show and, and it just clicked, um, the autism. And, yes. And uh, his son is on the spectrum and, and it realized, Tony realized then as an adult playing in the NBA that he was on the spectrum too. Yeah. What did you think of when you Which saw that? Which makes it even more impressive for him to absolutely go on through. Like, I, was it a thing? This is going back 10 years ago where autism potentially wasn't as easily diagnosed. It's just you're a little bit... I guess a little bit different. And, and if it was like, diagnosed, you probably were kind of either put into special classes. I think that's you prob- what he said. It was almost good in that he didn't because otherwise he would have he been. wouldn't have been in the NBA. Yes, that's what he said. That's right. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, but it does. Like you said, it just makes sense. And I think that he would know that. And anyone that played with Tony would like yeah. loveliest guy in the world. Tony was one of my favorite teammates ever, one of the nicest guys ever, but did it differently. And we yeah. just thought that's just Tone. We're always like, that's Tone. He yep. just does it differently, but he, that's, there's that a reason awesome. to it. Yeah. Um, but again, to to go on and play in the NBA for so long and yeah, set that, his family up for life now. Well that done. segment blew my mind when I saw yeah, it because it was it all the way for me Australia. and you guys yeah. knew him. You guys knew him better than I. And yeah. I'm just from my perspective, I'm like that makes yeah, so much. I remember sense. sitting there going, "Huh, yeah, that's, that's that awesome. makes so much sense. Good on him." All right, you went to a Lobo game. What do you think of this current Lobos? How often do you keep up with the current Lobos? It's good. They're going to be good, aren't they? Yeah. I tuned in. Obviously, had a few lean years, of course. Tried yeah. to follow it. Um, Coach Ware was great. He, when I came to visit a couple of times, he was fantastic. Unfortunately, didn't have the, the success that we envisioned. Um, but this team looks good. Um, they got the talent. They got talent. Yeah, chemistry, obviously. But that's every team. But yeah. they they need to get that's, it. That's that's. Like, I follow it. Follow college basketball a little bit. Not as much as I, I'll admit. Not, not as much as I used to. But now trying to find between the NLI and the guys being able to transfer yeah, in yeah. and out and all that. Like. It would be hard to build chemistry because yeah. you don't know guys are coming in and out, flat out, and that's why I think we were great during our time. Is that we were there, f- we a didn't have a lot of guys, a lot of three and four year yep. guys with that's, you guys. That's the way it worked. We didn't, like I said earlier, we didn't have those four or five star recruits that would do a year or two and take off and then bring yep. another four or five star recruit in. We had the same group for pretty much the whole time, um, and I think the highest we had was a. Th- I think Alex might have been a four. Yeah. Alex Kirk might have been yeah, a four-star. Yeah. I think he might have been the highest recruit. Yeah, on. Drew, but he was a transfer. Drew but other transfer. than that, we're all ones, twos, and threes yeah. that developed and did it the hard way. So um, this team has a, has a lot of talent, um, which I'm really excited to see. Followed them closely last year when they went on the streak. I was getting yep. taps on the shoulder from teammates in Australia going, is this New Mexico? They haven't lost a game. That's, that's you guys, you right? I'm like, yeah, that's us. Yeah, that's us. I might have jinxed them a little bit though because once I did that sort of ticket thing <laughs> and we haven't lost a game and we want to get our first sellout since whatever, we ended up Was losing. it about that time? Yeah, it was about that time. So we get to blame you we for it. We can blame right. me for that. But this group is is good. I know House missed the game at St. Mary's. That would have made it pretty interesting. So hopefully he can get back. But um, coach has been great and let me come along and watch a few um, practices. Uh, so it's he's been a cool funny to guy see him too. up close. Yeah, he's lovely. Yeah, he's been great. All right. What can uh, fans that uh, are still sort of following you or maybe want to follow you uh, that haven't been um, with what you're doing now? Uh, you, Instagram, social media, is that the best way to, to remind us what team you're on and, and how they can follow what you're doing now? Yeah, I haven't been. I've. Never been a massive, certainly not an influencer. Um, I try to try to do it, but You're our an team hasn't even been if you don't good. Want yeah, go. <laughs> our team. It's hard when you t- our team hasn't performed the last couple of years, so it's hard to keep up with social media when your team's not performing because you get because you want to get off that, of it. Yeah, well, you want to get off it, and this perception that like oh, he's prioritizing this versus this. So I've been pretty quiet on the front for the, certainly the last couple of years. Um, kids will do that too, though. Yeah, I've got two kids now. So and remind me the ages of your kids. So my son Titus is he'll be four in February. Okay, and my little girl is eighteen months younger than than him so um That's awesome. about to take Titus to the abc with b mason very and, cool. and get a few little drills in to see how he goes but he loves his footy titus so i don't know um we put the basketball on every now and then and he he's got a little hoop at home but um he loves tackling he's so rough with his sister yeah. so i think he might be a footballer so we'll see we'll see that's awesome man hugh this has been awesome um just catching up i i think when it comes to nostalgia in this town and, and like Lobo nostalgia, just talking about the old days. And yes, 10 years ago is already the old days. <laughs> yeah, You're you already part of the old you days. Can remind me again. Um, Lobo fans love it. And, and I appreciate you for doing that. Um, how long are you in the States for? So here for another two weeks. Okay. And then I've got to head back for first block of camp. Our camp goes for three months. So it's a, it's a bit of a grind. Three month uh, camp. Three month camp. Yeah, it's brutal. Yeah. All right to get us fit enough to be able to survive the season, basically. We do all That's our crazy. work here in the next three months to get us ready to last the six months' worth of season. So 
that's the basketball was great in that it was year round. I would do U and M and then I'd fly home and do boomers and yep. then I'd come back and do U and M. So it was always going. But this one's uh, but I never got time off, whereas I got time off now. So yeah. I'll do a month here, then I'll go back for a month of camp, and then I'm coming back here for Christmas, do two weeks here in Albuquerque okay. for Christmas, because my what Kirsten's brother's getting married in end of January. Oh, cool. So rather than take the kids backwards and forwards on that plane for 15, 16 hours. Are they going to be able to stay here for a while? They're going to stay here. So, That's awesome. And I'm used to it. During camp, I may as well not be home too because I come okay. home exhausted. So Kirsten's like, I'd rather stay here than be around you at home. Oh, that's anyway. cool. So we'll tr- yeah, try and get as much time with the kids here in Albuquerque. So I'll do a bit of to and fro on. But you can be able to get to another Lobo game before you yeah. go this go round. Yeah, I'm going to be going Thursday. on Thursday. Yep. Yeah, I don't have any. I'm, I leave just before the state game, okay. and then I leave just before conference in the new year too. Okay. So I miss the good stuff, but any time in the pits, a good you time. You could just so. keep following Jeff Grammer and, uh, I have on, been, no, you are, mate. That's why I can't believe you're still here as well. That's, uh, <laughs> I know, right? It's been, I can't yeah. believe they have really well. Yet. Was it, I'm, excuse my ignorance, but I don't, and I'll, I'll pump you up here, but what was it? You were the, I was, uh, I, I did win an award. I, I got, uh, can you tell us? Yeah. yeah I know it's, probably US... the, it's probably in the cuts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Show, I, I, I make sure every guest makes sure yeah. to bring this up. Um, I did say it here. In make the U S sure uh, bring up, yeah. Uh, U S basketball writers association, uh, last year, uh, go. selected me the Jim O'Connell beat writer of the year. Where, where's the, is it in the, it, is it's, it it's, in oh, the I, or is it, you saw when we walked through the newsroom and they're redoing it. Normally there's a throne in there. So that, that's why they're redoing it. They're making room for this. They're giant, making room for my trophy, trophy case. Trophy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I have my whole oh, well section done, of the newsroom. Well done. No, I've definitely, the kids uh, grow up too, little girls. She I got be. a four, 14 and four, man. It's ridiculous. 14. Well, she would have been four when I was here last. Yep. She That's crazy, right? I go. have a 14 and a four. The 14 can watch yep. the little one. I remember one a little her coming to a few, like seeing her. Yeah. I brought her to a couple practices sometimes. And there you go. She, I'll, I'll, I'll sign off on this. Alex Kirk walked into the room once and she had never seen anyone near, even close <laughs> to as tall well, as a seven footer. That? Right. Well, that's right. <laughs> so I, that was the day that she realized, man, dad, you're cool yeah. and all, but like that guy's seven <laughs> that foot guy tall. Seven foot My dad's tall. not exactly like everyone else. So, close, but not quite. Um, the, that was a, that was a good day. She, uh, it was fun bringing her around, but, uh, I also remember her that's realizing that dad isn't quite like these basketball players yeah. <laughs> so i write about him so yeah, good yeah you i appreciate it man good luck anytime. thanks for coming in and uh very much appreciated anytime thanks for having me all right well i hope you enjoyed that conversation with hugh greenwood obviously a, a nice little fun trip down memory lane for some of those lobo basketball memories that he had from when he was here in the united states uh 10 years ago now uh already it's kind of kind of crazy to think about that his era the hugh greenwood era was uh was 10 years ago now so uh appreciate Hugh for taking some time out on his family vacation back here in Albuquerque to uh to share some of those memories and some of those stories with us hope you enjoyed this pod not only this episode but all the podcasts that are a part of the Albuquerque Journal podcast network you can see all of them or hear all of them at abqjournal.com slash sports and you could also wherever you download your podcast you can get the talking grammar podcast but especially watch them all on youtube and please subscribe wherever you're watching or listening to this podcast subscribe rate us do all that good stuff and uh, make sure to share the word um, about all these conversations that we're having with people like you current players current coaches all that stuff so hope you're enjoying all of this all of our coverage as part of the albuquerque journal podcast network and until next time thanks for listening Thank you.